Okay, so today we are talking about antisocial personality disorder and its treatments. So why don't you give me a brief outline about what antisocial personality disorder actually is? Well, it's it's called a, a personality disorder, which means that it's about your whole personality, which is things like the way you act, the way you feel, the way you think about other people and your relationships with other people. And it's antisocial in that it's against other people, it's the social being other people. So it's, it's sort of a personality disorder where you're constantly at war with other people and with your surroundings generally. So you see other people as your enemy and you uh, see yourself as someone who has to form alliances and break alliances and <clears throat> conquer territory and you can either be victorious or meet defeat and your whole life is basically a fight of some sort. So that's that's what I think the core of antisocial personality disorder is. Mm -hmm. So the issue of uh, control is very, <coughs> is very big. Okay, so it's not just someone being socially withdrawn then, it's not the common term antisocial, it's a little bit different. It's ex absolutely mm -hmm. not about being withdrawn and shy, that's a completely different type of person. Okay, okay. Um, so how do people with antisocial personality disorder experience the world? It's obviously different from how mm. other people experience it. Well, as, as Morten was uh, telling, they, they see the world as a place that needs to be conquered or is full of potential enemies uh, that they need to be uh, quickly gaining control over. So it's, a, it's very much a hierarchy and it's a big uh, power struggle. So they're not at peace with the world as such, but if you're with them and support them, they will be at peace with you. So the world is not a friendly place. It's really survival of the fittest, you could say. Yeah. Do you think that feels quite isolating for them then? Do you think they feel isolated from the rest of the world? In many ways, yes. <clears throat> I think especially as, as people grow older and they experience that they have been in a lot of conflicts with other people and they have uh, destroyed their own relationships repeatedly. So they lose more and more people and they end up sitting very much alone. And they also begin to learn that it's their own actions that cause all these rifts. Whereas when a person is young, what they tend to think is that it's someone else's fault. So that's another part of it, that, that this is what we call the externalization of, of blame. It's someone else's fault if something goes wrong, if there's a conflict, it's the other person's fault. Mm. If I don't get the job, it's because the manager was stupid. Uh, it's never because I didn't perform well. Okay. So that's that kind of thinking too. And do they feel normal then in the mm -hmm. sense do they feel that they are different from other people do they think everyone else experiences the world in the same way that they experience mm -hmm. it i think that uh, i think uh, many don't they don't want to feel normal they're in many ways uh, special and, and needs to be, be recognized as special needs to be shown proper respect the respect can be very important to them uh, and it's more important that they are shown respect that they need to respect others but i, I also think that uh, when you encounter them as young, uh, they have already experienced some of them uh, social isolation because of their anger and impulsivity. So they have maybe have a hard time uh, getting friends. Uh, they can have had a hard upbringing. So in some ways, they can have actually been marginalized, uh, and that's also why they might look for for peer groups uh, where their their you know their anger, their impulsivity is more respected and acknowledged. They they they're actually appreciated. So I think uh, some uh, some uh, sense of isolation uh, can occur at a very early age, but um, but um, but maybe it's not so reflected. It's more a feeling of that people don't understand me. So so uh, okay. So fuck, fuck them, <laughs> so to speak. Okay. <laughs> the people that they tend to associate with, or do they often have? All, do they also have antisocial personality disorder or some some sort of personality disorder to the same extent? Yes, especially they will have antisocial behavior because they will need to find people that they can sort of, sort of say cooperate with, that they can form these alliances with. We can they can be partners in crime, or they can do do drugs together. So there will be this sort of attraction to people to like-minded people for that reason alone, mm -hmm. but also because other people will reject them. And ha having been rejected and being angry, what what do you do to find someone you can be with? People okay. usually seek like like company. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people with antisocial personality disorder are labelled as maybe psychopaths or psychos, and do they see themselves in that way as well? 
Some do, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And some take pride in it. As Bikita described, it, it's, a, it's a, an appreciated trait. Okay. Mm -hmm. And psycho psychopathy is, is, of course, this big monster in our big myth in society about the evil person. But it's, it really, it's really just a description of a, a way of relating and a, of a way of handling emotions. Maybe we should also add that you can have people with this personality disorder who are very high functioning. Mm -hmm. You know, so sometimes we talk about, we meet them very often, they have comorbid drug problems, uh, and alcohol problems and lots of other problems. But there are also people who are doing very well in the business world and make a lot of money. So it can, you can be well adjusted and I don't think they would label themselves, maybe they would as psychopaths, some would. And some would probably label themselves in very good uh, <laughs> in, uh, leaders or so. I think it also depends very much on the person, mm -hmm. what, what label they want. But the thing is that they want to pick the label, okay. <laughs> I think. So it's maybe sometimes quite hard to identify someone with antisocial personality disorder if they are so high up mm -hmm. in businesses or if they are quite good leaders and they're maybe just quite charismatic. Mm -hmm. So it may be quite hard to actually identify when someone isn't just charismatic, when they're maybe just something a bit, bit more. <laughs> That's a very really interesting question. Mm -hmm. How do you assess personality mm -hmm. disorders mm -hmm. and antisocial personality disorder in particular? Yes. So, do patients with antisocial personality disorder tend to feel remorse for the crimes that they've committed? In general, what is, what is the case is not that there's no remorse. Very few people have no sense of remorse. But they have a lower, you have, if you are antisocial, you have a lower capacity for remorse. And some more than others. All of these traits <clears throat> have the common denominator that it's some people more than others. Some people steal more than others. Some people lie more than others. Um, and some people can show remorse more than others. And the people who are very low capacity will tend to be very difficult to work with and be very difficult to live with. Mm -hmm. Do you think there is maybe a spectrum for antisocial personality mm -hmm. disorder? Do you think that um, everyone to some extent will be on that spectrum at some point, but some people are maybe just higher on the spectrum mm -hmm. than others? Definitely. I think the word spectrum is very important. And as Morten mentioned, uh, some people may be, may be very low and on remorse and some people may have a better access uh, to remorse. So that's already there, you've got a spectrum. And uh, like people with uh, depression and anxiety, some it's the same with antisocial personality disorder, that some people are more prone to violence and some have uh, better control of their impulses than others. So it's, uh, it's there's uh, some core core features that, that they are alike, but, but it, each person is an individual, so it will have different... Uh, you know, different each person will have a different character. Okay. So I think it's very important to remember and also has a, a very important when you want to treat and engage them in treatment that you're aware of the individual yeah, differences. Not just the same, exactly. Not everyone's the same. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you, thank you very much for talking about antisocial personality disorder. Thank you, Claire. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.